This is an NBC News special report. Here's Tom Yamas. And good afternoon. We are coming on the air with breaking news about the deadly car crash today at a border crossing between the U.S. and Canada near Niagara Falls. New York Governor Kathy Hochul is briefing right now. Let's listen in. At this time, there is no indication of a terrorist attack. Let me repeat that. At this time, there is no indication of a terrorist-involved attack here at the Rainbow Bridge in Western New York. At 11.27 this morning, a car going at a very high rate of speed crashed into a median at Niagara Street just minutes from here. It's in the city of Niagara Falls, near one of the border crossings into Canada, the Rainbow Bridge. There are four border crossings here in Western New York. This is one of the busiest crossings, not just in Western New York, but along the entire U.S.-Canadian border. And it happens on the busiest travel day of the year. So naturally, in a time of heightened alert, everyone sprang into action. It crashed into a Customs and Border Patrol booth, and the car and the booth immediately exploded. Burst into flames. I saw the video of an airborne vehicle that was absolutely surreal. You actually had to look at it and say, was this generated by AI? Because it was so surreal to see how high in the air this vehicle went, and then the crash, and the explosion, and the fire. That video will be released very shortly. As I said, we're not aware of any threats to this area, but I state the caveat that the investigation is ongoing. If you can imagine, this vehicle basically incinerated. Nothing is left but the engine. The pieces are scattered over 13, 14 booths. So it is a large scene, and it's going to take a lot of time for our federal law enforcement partners, who are with me here today and I'll identify, to be able to piece together the real story, to identify the make of the car. Obviously, there is not a license plate. I've been briefed by law law enforcement for the last hour. New York State Police, Colonel Andy Crow, Colonel Allen, other law enforcement officials. I've been joined by Andy Bowker, who is the special agent in charge of the Customs and Border Patrol. I was also briefed by the SAC from the FBI. Also is on the phone with Secretary of Homeland Security Mayorkas. The FBI Director Christopher Bray has reached out. The White House has reached out. My staff has been in communication with all of them. I spoke with Senator Schumer, Senator Gillibrand, Congressman Higgins, local law enforcement, as well as local elected officials, because the world is watching to find out what happened here. And again, at a time when there's such high anxiety, stress levels are already high. And we've been on heightened alert since October 7th. That's why it's so important for me to stand here and tell the world based on what we know at this moment and again, anything can change. There is no sign of terrorist activity with respect to this crash. We've identified that this is a local individual, a Western New Yorker. Two individuals died in the, the vehicle. The Border Patrol individual working in the booth was injured. The booth literally protected that individual. They went to the hospital with minor injuries and have been released. There is also, again, the busiest travel day of the year, there is a major disruption. And first of all, our cross-border travel. Right now, the Rainbow Bridge will remain closed while law enforcement continues investigation. Again, this is a large, widely scattered scene, and we're trying to identify all the elements to make sure that there is no unforeseen uh, situations that we need to address before we can open again to the public. We're going to make sure the public is safe before they go back on the Rainbow Bridge. Also made sure the, the structural integrity of the booths. Also very important, our state DOT be involved in that as well. The Whirlpool Bridge and Lewiston Queens Bridge opening early this evening, probably open by now. Can anybody confirm that? Yeah. We're open now, okay? They are open now. There's been a lot of people trying to get across. I appreciate that. Uh, the Peace Bridge, which was open, is already op reopened half an hour ago. For those traveling by train, unfortunately, Amtrak has temporarily suspended its cross-border service between New York State and Canada. 
And at the Buffalo Airport, despite early reports, the Buffalo Airport was never closed and everything is normal. Domestic flights are still active. Uh, there has been no cessation in service there. What I want to do at this time is extend my extreme gratitude to all of our partners, Customs and Border Patrol, Homeland Security, FBI, our state police, local sheriffs from Niagara County, Erie County, all stepped up to assist in trying to identify what exactly transpired here beginning at 11.27 a.m. this morning. They gave up their time from their families. They showed up. They reminded us that there are people who put on a uniform every single day, put themselves in harm's way. The people out there on that bridge, in the immediate aftermath of what happened, unknown, the source, the cause of this explosion, were out there doing their jobs. So I want to pause to give them just the gratitude of a governor and 20 million New Yorkers who sleep better at night because of their willingness to do this. They run toward danger. They should be with their families today, but they will not be. This investigation will go on for a number of days, and that's why we will not have any further answers uh, at this time as to the individuals involved, the deceased, uh, any motivation, and there's a lot, of, a lot of unanswered questions. But at this time, we just need to dial down the temperature right now. And that's what I plan to do as governor, just let everybody know all is well. We're investigating. More information could arise, but based on the preliminary investigation, no sign of terrorist involvement in the horrific explosion that occurred here in western New York. Any questions? Dr. Vogel, can you explain what you're basing that determination on, that there was no terrorist activity here, and instead of calling this a horrific accident? That's based on my briefings with uh, experienced law enforcement, with the FBI, Homeland Security, and the Customs of Border Protection. Uh, they, are, uh, they brought experts. They're still analyzing this, but there's been no indication based on any online threats, anyone taking credit for anything, all the usual areas you look to identify, whether or not there's a group involved at this time. At this time, You hear me say this, at this time, a dozen times, because it is still unfolding. But I didn't want to leave the public un with a lot more anxiety than they need to have at this time. So there's just, I just want to be perfectly clear, there is no evidence to show at this time that this was a terrorist activity. There is no evidence at this time that this was a terrorist activity. And that's what I want to make very clear to the public, just to calm everybody down. This is really important because uh, based on what's happening in other parts of the world, everybody is on edge. And this is an international border. And we've always felt the vulnerability there. But this was a, a you know, I won't call it an accident. It's not been determined to be an accident. Uh, you don't know whether the, intent, the driver was intentional in how they drove. We do not know that. All I know is there was a horrific accident. Well, I won't call it an accident. A horrific incident, a crash, an explosion, loss of life, but at this time, no known terrorist connection. Governor, we saw agents canvassing the neighborhood, specifically near the casino and on Niagara Street. Is there a reason why, or sources are telling us this couple may have left the casino and were on their way to Toronto? I can't confirm um, where the car originated at this, at this time, but there is suspicion that the vehicle may have originated in, uh, in that vicinity. Yeah, I'm sorry, can you just clarify of Niagara Falls or where that car may have originated? Within the city. Of Niagara Falls? Not saying that's a local resident. I'm saying that it was. It's a, it's a Western New York resident, who was, most likely in that vicinity, prior to the, high speed, high rate of speed, extraordinarily high rate of speed, that led to the, crash into the median that sent the vehicle airborne, and when you see this video, your jaw will drop, in disbelief at how this went so high over a eight, an eight foot, high fence. Uh, it's rather extraordinary. Time for one more. Can you just walk us through the idea, the decision to close all borders, all border crossings in Western New York? What went into that? And, and can you walk us through the sheer magnitude of that kind of decision? Uh, I'm going to turn it over to the representative from the Customs and Border Patrol, special a or agent in charge. Uh, that would be Aaron Bowker. Yeah. Would you like to address the decision made to close the border? Thank you, Governor. Uh, I think any time you have an incident like this, um, you want to take an abundance of precaution to protect not only the staff and personnel, but also the public. 
So you make a quick decision like that, and then uh, and then to go back based on the totality of circumstances, working with law enforcement partners to reopen, we are reopened. Can you walk us through? Uh We've just been listening to border officials along with the governor of New York, Kathy Hochul, address the state and really the nation officer. in saying that that incident that happened at the U.S.-Canada border in Niagara Falls was not a terrorist attack. To use her words, there are no indications of a terror attack right now. She referenced this video we're playing for you right here. She says this is the video that she saw, and what it looks like is a horrific incident involving a car crash. Apparently, there were two people inside that car. It was at a high rate of speed when it went airborne, flying over an eight-foot fence, crashing, and then exploding. We also have video of the explosion and the aftermath, as you see here as well. I want to get right over to Ken Delaney. He covers intelligence and the Justice Department for us. Ken, the governor told us a little bit, even though the debris field spanned 13 to 14 customs booths and that there was just debris everywhere, they were able to get a sense of what happened here, and she was briefed by Homeland Security, FBI, and state police. That's right, Tom. And she also made clear they know who these people were, that they were locals. Um, and you heard a question about about uh, reports that they had been at a casino, which she declined to confirm. But it's pretty clear, you know, she she wasn't saying conclusively that this was an accident because they can't rule out, for example, a suicide attempt. But what she's saying is there was no evidence of terrorism. By the way, we're also hearing that now from our law enforcement sources, um, who were the ones that told her that, uh, and that um, that this was just a horrible tragedy, uh, a, a car that was out of control and crashed and created such a, a conflagration, such a huge explosion, that it got people concerned initially uh, that there might have been a vehicle bomb. Uh, but they quickly ruled that out. And, and, it, and this is going to raise a lot of questions about all the closures of the border crossings and Amtrak traffic and international flights, whether that was an overreaction. Uh, at the same time, it's hard to it's hard to fault uh, authorities for being hyper cautious in, in an environment where we know that there is a heightened threat of terrorism. Yeah, and, and, and we spoke about this earlier, Ken. You really you couldn't take any chances on this week, right? You have a holiday week. Tensions are incredibly high around the world and here in the United States with what's happening in the Middle East. Absolutely. And, and, you know, the FBI director said just a few days ago that the threat of terrorism in the United States is higher than it's been in many, many years because of the Israel-Hamas uh, uh, conflict and because of the rhetoric that's coursing through social media, that there is a heightened concern about lone radicals. And, and that's where a lot, of, uh, a lot of minds and suppositions went when we all saw this incident. But it quickly became apparent to law enforcement that there wasn't a car bomb. Then they had to reconstruct exactly what this was. Uh, the governor just made clear they identified who, uh, who was in the car um, and, and, and determined that it was not terrorism. It was a horrible tragedy. Ken Delaney and stand by for us. Tens of millions of Americans right now on the roads, in the air, traveling for the Thanksgiving holiday. NBC Stephanie Gosk is in New York City. And Steph, even though this appears not to be terror related mm -hmm. at all, this still caused a major pause in travel around this area. Yeah, I mean, it certainly did. Up by the border, they shut down those. You heard Border Patrol talking about it during the press conference. They shut down those four very busy border crossings. They also, at the Buffalo Airport, stopped all international flights, both departing and arriving flights. And Amtrak shut down its service between New York uh, and Canada. So disruptive, but it appears as if that's changing now. Those three out of the four uh, border crossings that were shut down, obviously not the Rainbow Bridge where the incident took place. But the other three are now opened up again. And I would imagine you'd have Amtrak up and running again soon as well, Tom. All right, Stephanie Goss for us. Stephanie, we appreciate that update. Before we go, I do want to update you on another big story we are following right now. This from the Middle East. We're getting late word that the hostage exchange broker between Israel and Hamas has now been put on hold until at least Friday. That according to the Israeli National Security Director. We're going to have much more on that story and the latest from that border crossing crash on our streaming network, NBC News Now, online at NBCNews.com and tonight on NBC Nightly News. I'm Tom Yamas. We thank you so much for watching.